Episode 7 of Hasbin Hotel. Hello, Rosie! Reaffirms Charlie's natural born talent to inspire others, and Vaggie's angelic inclination to protect her loved ones as they prepare for the fight of their lives against Adam and the Exorcist. This episode also sets the stage for Season 2, as it expands the world building with the introduction of Cannibal Town, and we get to see Alistair finally put his master plan into motion as he finally gets to strike a deal with Charlie. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. What exactly is Alistair's endgame with Charlie? And how will he use this deal to his advantage? That's what we're here to figure out today. And if you end up enjoying this video, please throw it a like. And if you want to stay in the loop of all of our Hasbro Hotel content, please subscribe to the roundtable with notifications on so you never miss a video. There will be loads of theories rolling out during the break. With all that said, let's dive in. Like I said in the intro, this episode primarily sets the stage for Season 2 as it uses the downtime between Charlie's meeting with Heaven and the arrival of the Exorcist to check in with where our characters are at, how they're feeling amongst all of this doom and gloom. Learning that Charlie is alone and is in distress, Alistair wastes no time seizing the opportunity to finish what he started all the way back in the pilot, making a deal with Charlie. He offers information on how to kill an angel, something he learned about back in episode 3, an episode that I think people will have a greater appreciation for now that we know how it all plays out. Anywho, instead of seeking Charlie's soul in exchange for this vital information, Alistair just wants her to fulfill a favor later down the road. Specifically, one favor at a time of his choosing where Charlie harms no one. I don't know about you guys, but despite the guarantee that no one's getting hurt from this favor, at least not directly, I'm still getting bad vibes about these terms and conditions. We know after episode 8 that Alistair's soul is owned by someone else, that he's caught in a deal, and he's desperate to get out of it, because what he really wants is exactly what I predicted in our video on episode 5. Alistair wants to be the true ringleader, the head honcho of hell, the puppet master who's pulling all the strings. And his deal with Charlie seems to tie into that, preying on her kind-hearted nature, knack for persuasion, and her insecurities to rise to the top. This is why he's been getting so close to her, why he felt so threatened when Lucifer showed up. She's the princess of hell. She's the closest in that he has to eternal domination. So what could this favor be? Well, I think it's something that has to do with the premise of the show itself and something that the show has been building up to since the very beginning. Alistair wants the Has-Been Hotel. Think about it! Since the very moment he showed up, he slowly started taking control of the hotel, leaving his mark in more ways than one. He renamed the hotel, provided it with staff, and even pulled some strings to get an ad running on TV that he himself produced. Yes, ensuring the hotel's success seems to be a part of his deal, but what if he's going this hard? Because he has big things in store that go beyond Charlie. Alistair wants power, and after the events of Season 1, the hotel is poised to be one of the most, if not the most powerful place in all of Hell, because it's the only place that offers a way out. Something that's sure to become common knowledge once the news breaks that Penchus managed to ascend and join the Kingdom of Heaven. But at the same time, the hotel and its staff may be regarded as something more, thanks to them stopping the extermination. Like, even though they were just fighting back, how is Heaven, and more specifically Luke, going to spin this? I think the aftermath of this season's big battle will come with devastating consequences for the hotel, and Charlie will feel at fault. And if she's at a low, feeling like all of her attempts to help people only hurt them in the end, Alistair could swoop in and offer a solution. Charlie stepping away from the hotel and handing the key over to him. Hence the whole no one's going to get her angle he's running with. He's planning for the moment Charlie hits her breaking point so he can use her insecurities against her and obtain what he's really been after. Kiki, the living embodiment of the hotel's key, didn't really play much of a role in this season despite being such a major part of the show's identity. Like, she's literally in the logo. There has to be a payoff with her eventually, and I think it may have something to do with Olau. And if there were any doubts about him being a villain prior to this episode, then Alistair constantly being depicted as a silhouette with a creepy smile should solidify that he's indeed bad news. The entire episode is him slowly going mask off in front of the audience. Alistair's deal-making magic is powerful, 
It causes Charlie to go demon mode. It creates green cracks in the ceiling of the hotel's lobby, and Vaggie was very alarmed by the mere sight of it. Personally, I think she still might be keeping secrets. That she, as an angel, must know something about Alistair that Charlie doesn't. And for whatever reason, she doesn't want to inform Charlie yet without concrete proof of his motivations. Because she knows Alistair means a lot to Charlie. Vaggie seeks out Carmilla Carmine for information on defeating the Exorcist, while Charlie and Edister head to Cannibal Town, highlighting that Vaggie is someone who protects, while Charlie is someone who inspires. I find that Cannibal Town is the perfect kind of gray area that this show has been made to tackle. Charlie had never been here prior to this mission, having made assumptions about its quality of life, only to discover that it's actually pretty rad, yet still very creepy. The citizens of Cannibal Town practice ethical cannibalism, building their entire culture around the consumption of demon body parts without eating each other. Instead, they turn already deceased body parts into delicacies like their Hannibal, and they're led by the overlord Rosie, who previously appeared in episode 3. She's sweet. Rosie pucks fun at Alistair being an ace in the hole, which is a clever double entendre on him being asexual and the trump card of the hotel. Ace in the hole being a hidden advantage or resource kept in reserve in until needed, which not only reflects Alistair's power, but also the nature of his deal with Charlie. Charlie and Alistair recruiting the cannibals for help was really just a way for the narrative to focus on Charlie's strengths as a leader, since the cannibals don't really do much in the finale. They're just kind of like the army that portals in during Endgame, fighting the exorcist so the main cast can deal with Adam and Luke. But I still really enjoyed it, and I'm glad they had a moment where Charlie spoke up about her anxieties surrounding Vaggie. Rosie assuring her that Vaggie's heart is in the right place. And what Rosie said about words being cheap, but actions speak the truth cut deep, because that really reflects Charlie as a character. She isn't someone who promises the world only to sit on her feet and make no meaningful progress. She backs up her words with plans that she's constantly putting into action. She shows that she gives a fuck and never stands down in the face of adversity. That's what makes her a great leader. And you know that song at the end got me pumped for the finale. And luckily, I wasn't let down. You have a giant X over your eye and wield an angelic spear. It's not rocket science. You know, if I started hyperfixating on this show like a month earlier, I would have figured it out too. While Vaggie's B story mainly served to highlight her own strengths in internal conflict, we do get to learn how to kill angels, fight fire with fire, and use weapons made out of angelic steel. Yep, that checks out. A little video gamey, but I dig it. Carmilla and Vaggie's song is basically this show's do it for her, emphasizing that Vaggie shouldn't fight for vengeance, but for love and to protect, and Vaggie's renewed purpose enables her to sprout new wings. Good luck, cosplayers! Overall, this was a pretty solid calm before the storm, but the Alistair stuff really stole the show. With that being said, what are your theories around Charlie and Alistair's deal? Let me know in the comments down below, and keep the conversation going over on Twitter and Instagram at Vox and at Roundtable Vids. Check out Toonjerk for some dope cartoon merch, and if you enjoyed this video, throw it a like, and subscribe to The Roundtable for more Hasbro Hotel content. Stay tuned for our breakdown on the explosive season finale, and until then, peace!